one, dog. Hi, guys. All right. <clears throat> we have made it to uh, what I think was supposed to be volume one or at the most volume two, but I think we're already up to volume four of the... Uh, what are, we, what are we calling this? The Collapse of Hambone Chronicles. So we are now finally up to the big, uh, well, I guess it's really not the, well, fuck. Maybe this is, Maybe this is volume five because I did a rant this morning when I was jacked up on coffee. And I want to uh, compare that with a rant now that I'm uh, well into uh, my third drink. So uh, I, I want to compare being jacked up on coffee uh, when you're uh, when you're in a uh, I, I don't know what the clinical term for what I'm in I'm sure that the shrinks have a have a uh, fucking name for it the existential crisis or whatever the fuck is going on with me uh, here on it is now a Sunday night uh, September 22nd. 2024. So uh, I am now officially a decrepit, uh, you know, uh, officially a decrepit old man with broken teeth stranded out without love. And I've already kind of done a, a lot of this rant this morning. So what I want to do as I do every year is, uh, you know, I, I like to revisit uh, each year, some of my most notable birthdays from the past, which I'll get to. So if you if you guys have been through this roundup, you, you've heard it before. But uh, <clears throat> before I start, I I just, I, I, I just want to say, you, you know, my mama. I've been thinking a lot about my mother today since that rant this morning. Uh, 65 years ago, I came popping out of that, that woman's loins. And, uh, you know, my mother always said, you know, she was a shrink. My mother was a shrink. And, and she always said that guilt and conscience were the two most underrated are they emotions or guilt and conscience? What was the word? Was it the most underrated emotions or the most, certainly the most underrated motivators? My mother was a big fan of guilt and conscience. She did not go along with this fucking uh, forgive yourself routine bullshit. She had no fucking place for the forgive yourself that we need more fucking guilt and conscience uh, in the, 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 this move to criminalize guilt and conscience, uh, according to her reading, and I agree with her, it, it is one of the reasons that this planet is so fucked. But I, I want to add a third one that I never heard her mention, and that is depression. That d depression is always getting these, uh, you know, such a bad rap. And, and, and I want to give depression, uh, you know, I, I want to give depression a, a, a fucking hand. Uh, it, it deserves some fucking kudos. You know, I mentioned that I spent two and a half hours yesterday listening to that soft white underbelly with Mark interviewing for the second time that divorce attorney. James Sexton, and, and Mark was asking him, you know, he, he's been a divorce attorney for, what is it, like 25, 30 years, <clears throat> you know, seeing the absolute worst side uh, of, of human nature, and Mark asked him, uh, you know, 
what is the main thing you have learned in, you know, in 30 fucking years uh, of dealing with these people uh, who understand, you know, going through divorces? And he didn't flinch. And he said, basically, I have learned that humans are completely full of shit. Everything about fucking humans is bullshit. Everything out of their fucking mouths is bullshit. Everything they fucking believe is bullshit. They, 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 they hear this fucking bullshit uh, from our culture. They absorb this bullshit. They spout this fucking bullshit. And, uh, and, 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 and divorce just, just strips away the fucking facade of bullshit. And, and it gets down to uh, what's below. What's that line in that in that Leonard Cohen song, Hallelujah, something like, you used to tell me what was going on down below, and, and, and you know, as the, as the relationship is beginning to fizzle, and uh, his partner no longer shares what is going on down below, and it comes out in, in, in fucking divorce court. It, it, it's where it is, and 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 that's way. And, and and I see the same thing with depression. That depression cuts through the fucking bullshit. Depression, whatever you want to call this, an emotion or what, whatever the term you want to use for whatever depression is. What it is, it, 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 it gives you the most realistic, in your fucking face, reality. You know, you, you get to take a pause from all of this fucking bullshit. All of this happy fucking horseshit, hopium, and, and, and all the fucking rest of it. The fucking fairy tale, uh, 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 fucking uh, your soulmate, and, and, and all of this unadulterated horseshit. It, 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 it gives you the unvarnished truth. Literally, it, it, it eats away the varnish, the veneer of all of this fucking bullshit that we walk around with. You know, this fucking uh, tanker full of fucking bullshit that, that, that we carry around. It strips that shit down to the fucking bone. A hell of a lot better uh, than, than fucking mushrooms or ayahuasca or any of this shit, dude. Uh, I, I feel fucking sorry for people who have never felt like I fucking do today. You know, you, you have to get down here sometime. You have to strip away the fucking varnish and the veneer of, of this fucking bullshit that we uh, all walk around in and, and, and get down to what's below. And take a fucking honest look at your fucking self. Take an honest look at your fucking life. Take an honest fucking look at humanity. Take a fucking honest look at this goddamn fucking planet. Okay? Get rid of the fucking hopium. Get fucking real. Get fucking depressed, people. Now, who knows, and it's probably going to happen uh, with me too, uh, all of this fucking bullshit is going to start creeping around, uh, for, for, uh, around the fucking edges, and uh, pretty soon, uh, you know, I'll crawl back out and, 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 and start actually uh, believing this fucking happy horse shit again. But uh, at least... Uh, I have had the honor, the fucking honor, uh, of, of uh, a few times in my life, 
and it tends to happen uh, 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 around the first day of fall, the change of the seasons from summer to winter, which is what I just happened to be born on, uh, I, I feel fucking honored that, that, that I have been able to strip the, the, all of this fucking bullshit that we all uh, that that we all fucking kid ourselves about, and 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 be able to look at myself in, in the fucking mirror, and see what the fuck is looking back. Okay. That's why you need to get fucking depressed, people. Be fucking honest with yourself how fucked you are. You're fucked. You've been fucked since the day you're fucking born. You're gonna be fucked till the day you fucking die. You know, and the and the, and the thing I, I appreciate about alcohol that uh, with with depression, alcohol. It, it uh, unlike some of this other shit, uh, what what alcohol does when you're down in a fucking hole like I'm in, uh, it, it 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 blunts a little bit of the fucking pain of it. it. Takes a little bit of the fucking pain, but it doesn't fucking lie to you. Do you hear what I'm saying? The fucking alcohol tells the fucking truth. You can stay down below and in the truth of how fucked you are and just a little bit of fucking pain relief. Let's give alcohol a hand here. It's the most honest fucking drug on the planet. Fuck your mushrooms. Fuck your ayahuasca. Get fucking really depressed, get really fucking drunk, and take a look at your fucking self. And if you can do it on your fucking birthday, all the better. Anyway, I just wanted to use that as a prelude. And so now, uh, anyone who's taken this tour, and I'm assuming the, uh, the battery will, uh, will, will cut off, we're, we're, we're going to rehash some of my favorite birthdays. Uh, and, and what's weird, I, I, I don't have one memory of a single birthday of mine, the first 17 years of my life. The first 17 fucking years of my life, I have no memory of my birthday. No memory. 17 fucking years. My 18th birthday was the day that I first wound up on a, in a psychiatrist office. I literally, on my 18th birthday, uh, was, was uh, seeing a psychiatrist and getting put on antidepressants. Which, which uh, I'm not going to get into, which, you know, ultimately led to all of this fucking alien abduction and all of this crazy shit from, from those motherfucking antidepressants. So I remember being uh, my first uh, time ever in, in a psychiatrist's office the day I turned 18, and then I have this very clear memory of... Uh, Sitting on the bridge, I was on Peachtree Road. That be Peachtree or Piedmont? No, I don't. It was at Peachtree or Piedmont Road, whichever the bridge over Peachtree Creek, right next to Peaches Records. Uh, after somehow, I was there alone the night of my 18th birthday. I, I was sitting down on the bridge with my with my feet dangling over the bridge, and and, uh, and and it was right beside the old Peaches Record Store in Atlanta, Georgia, 
and uh, what was just thinking it would be so fucking easy just to jump off this fucking bridge. So that was 18. My next memory, of course, the one I talk about every year. So three years, so that was 18. Three years later, uh, I, I'm, I'm 21 years old. Uh, the day I become a man, and uh, which started at 5.30 in the morning with Betty Boop, you know, of Cucumber and Golf Course fame. Uh, my, my, my next door neighbor on Clifton Road in Atlanta, Georgia, she was a nurse where she was literally climbing through my window uh, at the crack of dawn in her little uh, nurse's uniform to give me a fucking blowjob, sitting there sucking my fucking dick, 5.30 in the morning, like, I just want to be the first woman uh, to, you know, to welcome you to being a man. 21 years old, 5.30 in the morning, uh, having these beautiful nurses uh, climbing through my window to suck my fucking dick. And, and, and two more, I got three fucking blowjobs by beautiful young women uh, that day. Three fucking blowjobs, three beautiful women, a, age 21. So I, I had come a long way from, from that goddamn bridge. So uh, that, that was that uh that uh birthday and then i have no memory uh of, of throughout my entire marriage i never i have no memory of, of a birthday i have some vague vague memory of some sort of surprise party for my 30th birthday at my house in Santa Cruz, California, uh, some very vague little flashes of memory of the day I turned 30, but the day I turned 35 uh, was, I remember clearly, I was, uh, I was living uh, in Uray, uh, Colorado, where I had, you know, Ray Colorado's at 10,000 feet up in the air with the fucking oxygen content of a, you know, and uh, being there at the hot springs on my 35th birthday. It was my first day of middle age where I was no longer a young man. And so I'm there with this crazy damn chick he will be featured in the in, in the thirty set in the thirty ninth birthday, but on my thirty fifth birthday, you know, when we first got to Ray, Colorado, I tried to sw swim one length of that goddamn pool at ten thousand feet, and it about killed me. So uh, eighty eight lengths was one mile was one mile, and I made this promise to myself that by the end of the summer, by my 35th birthday, I was going to swim a fucking mile at 10,000 feet, and I spent the whole fucking summer, you know, hiking 14,000 foot mountains and whatnot, and getting all buffed up, and uh, so the big day came, I was a middle-aged man, and uh, th this crazy woman that I uh, ran around with during these years, she was 10 years younger than me. She was actually from Montrose, Colorado, was born in Montrose, and, and uh, so we get there, and uh, I, I say, okay, darling, I, I am going to swim one fucking mile at 10,000 feet and then I never need to do it uh, fucking again. So I swam 88 lengths of that goddamn pool. I swam one fucking mile. Get out. And, you know, she's right beside me. This girl, of course, she's 10 fucking years younger than me. She's right beside me the whole mile. We finished the mile. I'm sitting there. 
uh, bragging on myself. I said, okay, I'm no longer a young man. I am a middle-aged man. I, I proved I can do this. I never need to do this again. She looks at me and goes, come on, you pussy, do it again. And, and I said, what the fuck are you talking about? And she said, do it again, big man. And she fucking dives in the goddamn pool. And I sat there and swam a second mile. I swam two miles at 10,000 foot elevation on my first day as a middle-aged man. That was 30 years ago today. That's what I was doing. I can imagine me uh, swimming two feet at 10,000 feet today. So that was 35. 37, I just talked about, if you heard my rant a couple of days ago, you know, that was one of the dark nights of my fucking soul when uh, I had just learned my mother was dying of cancer and I was up there in that cabin all by myself without even a fucking dog with me, uh, with my thumb on my ass, you know, writing out my suicide note and, 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 and absolutely drunk as shit, getting ready to eat 53 Darvon one fucking hour, one fucking hour before I took my ticket to ride and, and, and get the fuck out of here and, and put myself to sleep uh, with those 53 Darvon and, and, and that bottle of vodka. My fucking sister had to ruin it by calling me. And uh, this close, this fucking close to fucking killing myself. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. So my sister fucked that up for me. So I'm back, uh, back at it. So two years later, where I am with the, with the same uh, cr crazy... Uh, bitch that I was doing the two mile swim with uh, at, at, on my 35th birthday. It's now my 39th birthday and uh, what she does for my birthday party is uh, we go to uh, Ramona's Swing Club uh, on, the, uh, on the shores of Lake Apopka, Florida uh, this was the last orgy uh, I, I, I was ever at. <laughs> Good fucking God. Uh, age 39, however many years ago, 26 years ago tonight, I, I was at Ramona's Swing Club with this little skank. Uh, and, and what's weird about this memory, guys, because remember, I went cold turkey on the fucking alcohol on my 37th birthday. It was the last drink I took for six fucking years. Uh, although I remember being drunk as shit at Ramona's Swing Club. I remember the, the only conversation I had with Ramona. She came out from behind the fucking bar or whatever and she takes me aside and, and, and she says if that little drunk uh, pointing to my date pukes in my hot tub. I'm going to be fucking pissed. And, and, and I said, Ramona, don't worry. That girl can handle her fucking liquor. There's no danger of her puking in your, in your fucking hot tub. The, the last thing I remember of my 39th birthday was being on this giant bed uh, with, with 13 other people, seven couples, seven fucking naked, sweaty, writhing, fucking sucking couples like, 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 like a bunch of fucking walruses on an ice floe just rolling around on a bed. Uh, 14 fucking people who, you know, who didn't even know each other sitting there fucking, you know, I remember the, the, the last episode of that fucking night. I, so I was fucking this crazy skank. She, I'm fucking her up the butt. 
she's getting her pussy eaten by, by some other fucking woman while I'm fucking her up the ass. Meanwhile, she uh, has the fucking ass cheeks of the woman in front of her. She's got her fucking tongue buried up this other woman's ass. My dick buried up her ass. Some fucking woman eating her pussy. Uh, some dude uh, fucking uh, the woman uh, that my date, uh, you, you know, is licking her fucking butthole. And I'm thinking, my fucking God, I, I, I mean, what in the fuck is this? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, that, that was my 39th birthday, and that is when I, uh, I said, okay, uh, that was it. Uh, I, I have had enough of what do the, uh, you, you know, the little godfather and, uh, and sugar tit of doom call it the, uh, the polyamory, is that called polyamory? Uh, they, they call it the lifestyle. Uh, apparently these fucking degenerate perverts, th th this is what they dedicate their fucking life to. I mean, it, it, it was, and don't get me wrong, I, 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 I mean, I, 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 it's not exactly like I, I was dragged kicking and screaming uh, to Ramona's Swing Club uh, on the fucking banks of Lake Apopka, Florida, but good fucking God. Uh, that that was it. That was the end of my uh, of my swinging lifestyle. Good fucking god. So that was thirty nine. One year later, I remember I was in uh, in uh, Santa Cruz, California, uh, climbing off a roof where I had just finished this big fucking roofing job. A uh, fifteen thousand dollar roofing job. I made fifteen thousand fucking dollars uh, uh, on this big fucking uh, roofing job, and I remember climbing down the goddamn ladder off of that fucking job and, and said, "I am so fucking done uh, with, with this shit." Yeah, right. That was twenty five years ago, and it was. Well, it would have been nine days later is when, uh, you know, I kicked that space alien's ass once and for all and forever. And, and uh, once and for all and forever, uh, I kicked that fucking space alien's ass and, and uh, it got rid of that goddamn chapter of my life. And then I moved to Austin, Texas. And then, of course, we, we have all heard of, you know, which I don't mind saying, I, I know when, when someone asks, what was the greatest night of your life? Well, it was actually an entire weekend, and it was not Ramona's Swing Club, okay? Uh, as memorable as Ramona's Swing Club was, not the greatest night of my life. Uh, it was 20 years ago tonight, 20 years ago tonight, my 45th uh, birthday party called Burning Pig as, you know, a, a takeoff on Burning Man, where I had, I, we were guessing 350 people. Uh, at my uh, at my birthday party, three hundred and fifty fucking people. That fucking party started at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. At, at, at ten o'clock on Sunday night, I, I had to run seventeen fucking people uh, out, out of my house. Uh, three hundred and fifty fucking people. Uh, I, I I had. Uh, fucking uh, music and top shelf weed and it, it was it, it it will forever remain the the single greatest uh, night of my life. Uh, I, I I was you know completely fucking full of myself, absolutely 
fucking full of myself. I, I was the most full of myself, uh, son of a bitch, uh, on, on the fucking planet. Which is probably one of the reasons I didn't get any blowjobs that night, but I got three you know, three women giving me sexual favors for my, uh, for my birthday, which I collected, you, you know, over the next few days. Uh, so even at 45, uh, I, I, I was still getting sexual favors. Three fucking women wanting to fuck me uh, at, at that party. Uh, you know, those, those were the Austin years, the most full of shit, uh, you know, I've mentioned the story, I mean, not on my birthday, where I actually auctioned myself off that a friend of mine was having an auction to raise money, uh, something with her kids, and she says, do you want to, do you want to put anything in the auction? And she goes, what do you, and I'm thinking, well, what do I have of value? And uh, I, I said, an evening with Hambone Littletail. And this absolute silence over the phone. An evening with Hambone, and I said, I can't think of anything more valuable, uh, you, you, you know, than giving, uh, giving one woman my undivided attention for an evening. I, I auctioned off at $152, by the way. $152 is what uh, an evening with Hambone Little Tail uh, sold for. <laughs> <coughs> and it was, uh, I think it was at that same party, you know. I used to have these, you, you, you know, these kind of chairs. And on the back of my chair, was I, I had Hambone's chair, and then there was the chair next to me said Hambone's woman's chair, and I remember one of these little uh, one of my little mini fuck buddies, who was that deep Dora, Dora Kuiper, uh, walking by, looking at that chair, going Hambone's woman's chair, uh, she goes. How the hell will anybody know whose chair that is? Uh, Dee was uh, this little girl. Uh, the day I met her, uh, you know, just getting to know her, and I was, you know, basically, he's like, like what, what do you do with your life? I think she was like 38 when I met her, and, and she told me without blinking, she said, I am sitting around waiting to die. I'm sitting around waiting to die, is what this little skanky whore told me. And ten, ten years later, she got her wish. She was dead. I, I don't know what she died from. Probably a fucking uh, drug overdose. But anyway, I'm losing track. So that was 45. Five years later, age 50, I was with my uh, friend, and she just sent me the video, but I can't fucking download it. She sent me the fucking video today. My 50th birthday, 15 years ago, uh, I was on the banks of the Mother of God River uh, down in uh, the Peruvian Amazon rainforest chasing this goddamn rooster around that uh, was going to be my birthday dinner that night, and we finally caught the fucking rooster and killed him and boiled him, and, and he was so goddamn tough, I could not even eat this, this fucking rooster. So that's where I was at age 50, was on the banks of the Mother of God River in the Peruvian Amazon. One year later, my 51st birthday, I was in Salce, Peru, uh, building a tiny house uh, on this uh, piece of land that I owned down there. This is when I was manic, not depressed, when I was at the height of my mania a few weeks before I crashed 
into one of the biggest depressions in my life. So on my birthday, we were building a thatched roof. The very last palm frond that was on the ground that I reached over to pick up and a fucking bullet ant. If you guys don't know what a bullet ant is, look it up. Uh, got me right in my fucking uh, little finger on my 51st birthday in Salsa, Peru. Well, that was a memorable fucking birthday. Uh, that, that was the single, hands down, nowhere, anywhere in second place, the single uh, most painful uh, experience, literally physically painful experience I have ever endured in my entire fucking life. The bullet ant. Uh, look it up. Uh, that was my 51st birthday down there in Peru. Four years later, I'm now 55. Uh, Ten years ago uh, tonight, what I was doing was sitting alone in, in, in this fucking beat up, run down uh, Airstream trailer. Uh, with, with no indoor plumbing, uh, in Paonia, Colorado, I was four blocks away from the, uh, house that Terrence McKenna was raised in, sitting there alone, uh, you know, I was, I was trimming weed is what I was doing out there in, in Colorado ten years ago, uh, pretty much in the same shape I'm in tonight. I think you can still find that video uh, from 10 years ago in my playlist called the Paonia Tapes, where I did something similar to what I'm doing now, where I did this series of videos when I was having this absolute dark night of the soul depression. Uh, while trimming weed in the birthplace of uh, Terrence McKenna. So that was 10 years ago. Five years ago tonight, there were about a dozen of us up at the Mexican restaurant in Ithaca, New York, and that turned really fucking weird. Uh, where the, uh, where the, uh, they did not want to serve us because we were so rowdy. This bunch of 60-year-olds, uh, there were about 12, 15 people, uh, at that birthday party, uh, four dogs there, and, and, and it got really fucking ugly that they were basically uh, telling us to pack up our shit and leave. I will never know to this day what Sandy did. Sandy Shellis got up from the table. She walked into that goddamn restaurant, that Mexican restaurant, and, and whatever Sandy said to those motherfuckers inside, they, they, they had a change in attitude. And, uh, so that was number 60. It's by, so I better hurry this up. So one year ago, uh, I think there were like eight people. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Me and six friends, uh, we, we went out to dinner, uh, at the Middle Eastern place. And then we went to this concert, uh, who was it? This band uh, from Ithaca, I'm having a, a brain fart, a damn good show. Cannot even remember the name of the band that we heard. I had a, a great dinner, a great night out, out on the town. Uh, everybody was friends. Uh, we, uh, we all gave each other hugs and whatever. It was a great fucking evening. 
Uh, I cannot believe I cannot remember the name of that goddamn Old Crow Medicine Show. The Old Crow Medicine Show. And one year later, out of those six people that were at the, were, were there with me a year ago, three of them have never spoken a word to me. They live 20 minutes from here. Maybe 30. Last, I, last fucking word I ever heard out of any of their mouths to me. 30 minutes from here. One fucking year ago, pretty much tonight. Never heard from them again. I mean, I, I, I get a, an occasional comment uh, I, I got some comment uh, uh, about use cheddar cheese in your mouse traps yesterday uh, from one of my good friends, and then the other three people uh, in the past year they both live within about a half. They all three live within about a half an hour of me. I've seen each of them, I've seen one of them twice, three times. I've seen one of them three times since I got here May 3rd. And I guess both of them, and, 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 and all, all of them since May 3rd, I guess I have had, I have visited three times since May 3rd, and that brings us up to this year, where, of course, uh, last night, uh, on Saturday night, uh, I was sitting alone with my thumb up my ass. To be fair, one of the guys from my party last year did invite me out for a drink last night. <clears throat> okay, and I declined, and here I am, uh, 65, sitting alone with my fucking uh, thumb up my ass and my little dog in my lap. Uh, to be fair, Sandy offered to come down here and hang out with me and spend the night, and I, I declined her uh, invitation to keep me company tonight. So I have no one but myself to blame for being alone on the opening day of my uh, golden years. But uh, anyway, I don't know if I've been at that thing. Is that fucking battery still out? But anyway, that is the... Uh, the annual tour of my uh, most memorable birthdays uh, o over a lifetime. I can only imagine the uh, birthday memories I'm forgetting. Oh, and with that, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm on an Umaletto binge over there on uh, on YouTube, and the YouTube channel Omaletto, I get on these binges. So I'm going to get back to Omaletto while I still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. That wasn't that bad. See, Pop, you do this every fucking year. Are you ever going to get bored of it? <laughs>